from there, maybe to the other side of that door and straight up here. That was pretty much it. It was just a little little dive. And there was a little opening foyer, in, and there was a, uh, one of those windows you could slide across. There used to be a guy sit there with the 357 Magnum because it was a bookie joint before we took it over. And Jim taught Sunday school out there in that front little room. And it was our season. It was our beginning season. Nobody came for a long time. And then we had that basement. The, the basement was so nasty down there that we shoveled, I can't tell you how much dirt and dust just to get down. Because if you walk down, you sink like snow. It was so bad. And uh, when we first went down there, uh, the Holy Spirit was in this thing, but I didn't think God was in this. It made no sense. I'm a, I'm a used car manager. We, we're, we're just doing Bible studies at a car dealership. And we go down there, and I said to the Lord, I didn't say to anybody else, I said, Lord, if this is you, then you need to get me a translator because I don't speak Spanish. And why in the world would we go down to South Omaha because I don't speak Spanish? None of us speak Spanish. So I said, Lord, if this is you, there's my fleece. So we looked the place over, and Jim and, and Dave, they're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, no, 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 this ain't God. This ain't God. We get in the car, and we're leaving, and there's a knock on the door of my window, and I roll it down, and this guy says, Pastor, if you need a translator, I translate. We call me pastor. Why'd you call me pastor? Never preach a sermon in my life, you know. But that's what the Lord did. So then I knew. And for six months, nobody came here. Nobody. And then Jim and Dave were going, mm, but I'm going, mm, yeah, because I got, God answered my fleas. I'll never forget, I was sitting at my house, and I had a quiet room in that house on 49th Avenue. And I went before the Lord, and I was on my face and praying. And I don't know if I fell asleep or if I had an open vision and dream, or dreamed it. But I saw in that room that I saw the master's feet. I could see the nail prints in his hand, and the room became so white. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, stay in the glory. Stay in the glory. And when I got down there that Sunday, for the first time, there was, there was people in line to get in. And all it took was that touch from him. And then we began to grow. And four bars in the neighborhood closed down when we moved in over there on, on End Street. And uh, because I told people, when Jesus moves in, the devil's got to move out. But there was one bar that did not leave, and it was the worst bar of all of them. And it was right next door to us. Some of you might have remembered it. It's called the Hub Classic. It was a terrible place. And when the landlord heard we were leaving, because we just... We were busting at the seams. He said, please don't leave. I said, we got to leave. There's nowhere to go. He said, well, this bar, their lease is up in two months. If you can stay two months, we'll throw them out and we'll give you that. And it was upstairs. So it was double the our size, but it had a basement too. So we prayed about it. We felt that was what the, we were going to do. So we took the second building. They weren't happy we were taking the second building. Matter of fact, they wallpapered our walls with Budweiser labels that we never could get off. And they left us little messages. But the Lord moved there powerfully. The downstairs, the Sunday school room, used to play, the building was a, a speakeasy. It had one of those steel doors with one of those little slots. If you'd knock on the door, you'd have to say the password to get in. There were wires. There was a, a machine uh, apparatus upstairs. So if the cops were raiding the, the prostitution houses upstairs, you could buzz the rooms and tell everybody to get out of the fire escape. I mean, that's the place we were. First place was the bookie joint. Second place was a brothel, <laughs> you know, back in the, in the 20s. This place, and when we moved here, this place was a party house. You know, in the 70s, some of you guys came to Kaggers here. And then there was a, there was a church here for a while, but it was not an outreach. It was an in-teach, and, and so we've been here now. So we've had these seasons. You've had your beginning seasons, your growing season. Then when we got here, we ran into Jim and Susie Mertz, who are some dear people and so anointed musically. Some of you know them. They, they, they're professional musicians. And when Jesus got a hold of them, they just started doing, they still are doing their thing. They even have an album out there called Blessed, I think. And they wrote a song for me called I'm Blessed. Some of you guys remember it. How you doing today? I'm blessed. How you feeling today? I'm blessed. I heard you woke up today. I'm blessed. I mean, it's really good. Not the way I do it, the way they do it. They've come and done worship. So we had them for a season, and it was good. And that was kind of our worship season as of that time. And then the Holy Spirit moved them on. 
because he wanted them to go out to Boys Town and lead the Protestant worship out there. And so we went into a season, we were just doing split tracks here where I would just lead the singing. That's where we lost a lot of people. No, just kidding. But uh, we just let off split track music CDs, and that was okay, but we needed live music. And one day I was mowing my lawn, and I was saying, Yahweh, we need live music. Send us a worship leader. And the Holy Spirit said, you do it. And I thought, well, I can't do it. I don't play the guitar. I had a guitar. Something like 25 years ago, I gave this very proud man who was in trouble $300, and he wouldn't let me just give him $300. He had to give me something. So he gave me a, an ovation guitar. And it sat in my closet for 20, 20 years. And he reminded me of that guitar in the closet. That was our first guitar we played here, that little ovation. And then... Me and Manda and Sarah, we started trying to put it together. And then, uh, then Matt got out. When Matt got out, everything changed. Because Matt was a magnet to a guitar. If there was a guitar, he had to play it. He drove me crazy. We would be singing an a cappella song at practice. Uh, a cappella means there's no music. We're just singing a song. And you'd hear a I said, Matt, this is an a cappella song. Well, it sounds good. I know it's okay, but it's an a cappella song. I told you, I was going to tape his fingers a couple of days because he can't have it on his lap when not play it. It's just like, I, I must. <laughs> I must. I never see anybody like him. I say, he, he's, right now, he's got an instrument up there and he's playing for Jesus. But when Matt came... He took and started showing us how to play. Taught us how to play, really, in a lot of ways. Showed us the chords. And when we were just, just flat awful, Matt would say, man, you guys are getting good. He did it. He did it all the time. God, you guys are you're getting better. We said, oh, that sucked. No, no. <laughs> I'd, I'd totally miss a whole section. I think it sounded okay, though. You know, he just never, he could have, could have been honest, you know, but the, God has grace. But he really got to where he was so proud of us, especially Amanda and Sarah, because those two just worked off of each other. And then my little sister Sarah, and then she starts playing the piano. That's just like we're the family Von Trapp, the Von Trapp family singers, ta-da. But really, even though I was the front man and the main singer, Matt was the leader when we first got started, because... He knew what he was doing. So, now we come to another season. No Matt. But he's with Jesus. And there's another season, too. You notice we don't have the guys from the, from the prison. Now, I'm not going to say anything bad about anyone, but we've, it was time for a change in that arena. And we're going to, we're going to go back because the guys want to come here. But there were some problems, and so we'll just leave it at that. And Holy Spirit is going to take us. So what do we do now? And so I was praying and just calling out to the Lord. What season are we going into, Lord? And the Holy Spirit told me it's the hunger season. We're going into a hunger season. The Bible says, blessed is he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. We've had our seasons. We've done our evangelism, and I love it. We're going to have a baptism today. I understand uh, we're always going to preach the gospel. We're always going to give people a chance to come to Jesus. But we need to become a body of believers that's hungry, hungry for more of him, not hungry for what I, I have to say. But on your own time, you guys got to be seeking him like never before because this is a season of hunger. Somebody smarter than me said, to hunger is to be human, but to hunger for Yahweh or for God is to feed on him. Hunger and thirst after righteousness and feed on him in all your heart. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It is he who will fill you to satisfaction. God will fill the hungry because he himself has stirred up the hunger. So my prayer is that God in heaven stir up our hunger for you. Stir it up. Help us to stop being satisfied 
satisfied. Oh, we got a pretty good church. Blah, 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 blah. No! I need the Lord in a new way. I need to know Yahweh in a way I've never known him. I want to be used by Yahweh in a way I've never, ever anticipated being used. I want the fire of God in my bones, not just my spirit. I'm hungry. And it took all this terrible week to get me to say, God, I'm ruined. I'm wrecked. I can't go on without you, Lord. I can't do this. I mean, you guys seem to get after Matt. Before you put a microphone in his hand, you just about have to pull it away from you. Matt, okay, Matt, all right. But as much as that, I just loved my brother. He was so kind to everybody. He was so good. He had his moments where I had to give him a shot here and there. I'll tell you, one time when we were kids, we were boxing down the basement, which we weren't supposed to be doing. And I was always a pretty good fighter. And mom called, dinner! And Matt went, Rrr, and I went, boom. <laughs> Out cold. After I get him up, not because I'm worried about him, I'm just afraid of a whooping. I'm going to get kind of knocked out my brother. <laughs> wake up, wake up. Oh, I was sneaky. Oh, my goodness. So, so in the case of spiritual hunger, when Yahweh prepares the heart to hunger, he will prepare his hand to fill. When you're hungry, he'll fill you. But if you're not hungry, he won't. I think we've been held back here slightly for the last couple of years spiritually so I don't think I think we were kind of inhibited but not anymore everything's broken off of us and everything's good and Bob says let's go for it blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled you Yahweh are my God earnestly I seek you I thirst for you my whole being longs for you in a dry and a parched land where there is no water that's where we got to get to where we say there's nothing in this world that can satisfy me and too many in the church we don't feel that way we think it's okay because we're saved and that's it that's not it that's the beginning that's what's wrong with the church today. We're so selfish as human beings. Okay, I got mine. Now you go get yours. Every revival in history seems to be the result of a few people becoming so hungry for God that they wanted him more than oxygen. Those who have such hunger will not be denied. It's time to seek a revival that becomes the most famous address in the world. It's time to seek a move of God that won't quit moving. That was Rick Joyner. John chapter 4 says, Everyone, Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I will give him will become into him a spring of water welling up unto eternal life. I want that living water flowing through me. Every day, not just on Sundays and Tuesday nights, because I'm hungry. I've always been a God chaser. But you know, these last few years, I haven't been chasing God. I've been just doing my job. I'm not doing my job no more. I'm not, I'm not doing my job no more here. I'm not going to shepherd you little sheep as if you don't know where you're going I'm because I'm going after Jesus and if you want to drag behind you go ahead or if you want to come with me get on board because I'm going after the Lord I'm going after the Lord he's been reminding me man you, you, you used to chase me more you don't chase me no more I'm pleased with you I love you 
But this was always, it's like marriages that go cold, you know. Man, we, when we were young and dating our wives, man, you couldn't wait to see them again, you know. Man, oh, how many hours has it been since we've seen each other? <laughs> then all of a sudden, things change. It shouldn't change. It shouldn't change. It's our faults. John 3 or 6.33 says, For the bread of Yahweh is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty again. Psalms 81. I am Yahweh your God who opened you up, uh, who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Are you kidding me? Look what he said. Open wide. Psalms 81. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. I'm not going to fill it with trash. I'm not going to fill it with this things of this world. I'm going to fill it with my word. I'm going to fill it with love. I'm going to fill it with wisdom. I'm going to fill it with anointing, power, glory. I'm tired. You know, we got anointed people in this church. We do. And the anointing is awesome. But I want it to go from anointing. What did he say to me when I had that vision? Stay in the glory. This is never supposed to have been an anointed ministry. It was supposed to be a glorious ministry. Your life is called to be a glorious life filled with the very spirit of the living God himself. Matt, I'll tell you, he would cook food for people. He, he'd call people out of the blue and say, hey, you know, I was just thinking about you. You know, the Lord loves you, you know. I've had people call me and say, oh, you just can't believe it. Oh, I could believe it. He'd call me all the time, too. I, got, I went home on Tuesday. I got his phone, or my phone, and I just started taking some of the texts that he had sent me. He never complained. That's what I started looking at. He never complained. If anybody could complain, Matt could have complained. He never felt good. I mean, he just didn't feel good. He had better days than others. But I, I'm looking at this thing, never complain. How are you doing, Pop? You doing okay? I'm <laughs> good, man. Don't worry about me. How are you doing? That's the way we should be. Matt? Matt was a good guy. Matt loved the Lord, too. No question about that. He wasn't perfect. Did things he probably shouldn't have done. I'm going to tell on him now. <laughs> One day he came to work, or come to church, and I could smell a little, a little herb on him. I said, Matthew, what are you doing smoking weed? He said, man, I hurt so bad. It kind of helps me with my pain. I said, brother, I don't really care except for it's illegal. So if it's against the law, you should be against the law. And he said, you know, you're right. But you know, you heard all the time. And I heard someone who said, yeah, Matt, we're smoking weed. Listen, man, you walk a mile in his shoes. Then you come tell me Matt was smoking weed. And I know God didn't keep him out of heaven because he smoked a bowl. He had a hard life, folks. He did. Psalms twenty two twenty six: The poor will eat and be satisfied. All who seek Yahweh will praise him. Their hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy. May we always realize our need for him. That's what we need. This is what I'm getting because that's what he always said. And that would say, the Lord's going to get me through it. The Lord's going to get me through it. And he had to get him through it. Let me tell you, I didn't tell you this. Yet, or did I? Yes, I did. See, I'm in the twilight zone. Did I tell you? I went in to pray for him, and the Holy Spirit said that. Okay, see. Bear with me. Psalms 42, 2. My soul thirsts for Yahweh, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Tommy Tenney said, Worship and spiritual hunger make you so attractive to God that your circumstances seek to matter anymore. 
He will move heaven and earth to find a worshiper. When you begin to worship with all your being and desire, your heart turns towards him. You capture his attention and tracks his affection. When my little girls were little, and I've told you this before, but it's really a good one, and it actually was an analogy I did see. I think it was Tommy Tenney, but I just remember when your kids are little and they're four or five years old or two years old, like little Alice, he's so funny. Those little monkeys can't catch you if you don't want them to, right? And they'll come chasing you. And i just laugh because I'd be faking them. <laughs> They'd be falling all over the place. They're so cute, you know. Couldn't catch them. Couldn't even touch me if I didn't want them to in those days. And then all of a sudden they'd go, oh, Grandpa, or oh, Daddy. And once they did that, suddenly the, the one who was being pursued suddenly becomes the pursuer. Once I heard, oh, Daddy, oh, come here. I'm going to give you a little monkey. I'm going to give you a squeeze. And love you up and tickle you and that's what he wants he wants us to be saying abba oh daddy oh lord right now my heart hurts and he was he can't resist that he's coming he's coming but we don't just do it in a season of sorrow we do it all the time john seven thirty seven. now on the last great day of the feast Jesus stood up and cried, If anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture says, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Holy Spirit who had not yet been given. He that is thirsty, let him come and drink. But if you're not thirsty, you don't come. If you're not thirsty, you don't come. And then if you do come, you don't drink. And he said, he that believeth in the King James, he that believeth on me, as the scripture said, that means who continues to believe on me, not just believes once, but he that continues to believe, to trust in, to rely on, and to adhere to me. Out of your belly, as the scripture says, not as I think. Well, I believe pretty good. I had this guy long years ago in one of our first places me and Jesus, he said, Jesus, he's right on my shoulder. That's what he told me. Me and Jesus, you know, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. I said, Jesus ain't on your shoulder, man. And if he ain't in your heart, he's got no part of you. You think, oh, well, me and Jesus, I don't do that church thing, but we're, we're square. You're not square. <laughs> if you haven't come to Jesus Christ by faith, knowing that he is the son of Yahweh, that he came into the world to die on the cross for your sins, you are lost. Of course you know who he is. The world knows who he is, but are you hungry for him? Come, all you that are thirsty, come to the waters. You who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money, without costs. Deuteronomy 8.33 says, Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna. Sometimes he lets us go hungry. He wants us to change our diet today. Some of us, we spend too much time. Look, I might hear something about this, but I really believe it. Daily devotionals are good but they're not in the place of Yahweh's word. Some people spend more time in daily devotionals than they do in the very word of Yahweh himself. I don't want a byproduct. I want a prime product. Again, I have some. Spurgeon, Jesus calling, some of these great things are good, but don't let it take the place of the very word. Read, read, read in context, read in faith. Somebody asked Wigglesworth one time, what translation do you read of the Bible? They didn't have all that many in those days. Wigglesworth said, I read the Bible in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to read the Bible is in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit. Let's just give you a couple more. God's got us through. I thank you so much, Father. I was dreading coming here today. 
Not that I didn't love each to see each one of you. I really love you guys. I know people called and I didn't answer. I just couldn't talk to people. And if it weren't for the hand of God, I couldn't even talk to you now. I'm just a blubbering idiot for the last couple of days. And it's just the way it is, you know. I don't mind saying it. You know why men don't cry? It's because we're wicked. You think we got to be tough. No, when your heart's broken. And I'll tell you, Matt would cry. Matt's heart broke, but never for himself. He broke for other people, though. I can tell you how many times I've seen him cry for people. Be talking to me on the phone, and, and he'd just break out crying. Bless his heart. Jesus, Jesus did weep, sis. Come on. To trust God in the light is nothing, but to trust him as dark in darkness is faith. Charles Spurgeon. A couple more, and I'm going to let you go. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say continually, Yahweh be magnified. Revelation 21, 6, and he said, I am done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. Revelation 22, 17, the spirit and the bride say, come, let Anyone who hears this say, come, let anyone who's thirsty, let him who desires drink freely from the water of life. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Psalms 107, he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hunger with good things. And then A.W. Tozer said, the only Christian you want to listen to is the one who gives you more the only Christian you want to listen to is the one who gives you more of a hunger for God. If you're listening to somebody, oh, I love listening to this. If it don't make you hungry for God, turn it off. Seriously. I hope in some way that over these years we've sat and we've, we've put a little itch and given you some hunger, but you better get ready because bring your bibs to church because we're going to get hungry around here. And we're going, to get, we're going to get filled with the Spirit of the Lord. So, receive a couple things. Receive hunger as a gift. Hunger for Yahweh isn't something we conjure up. We can't just say, okay, I'm going to get hungry and I'm going to get up. No, you have to say, give me that hunger, Lord. I'm, I need you. I need that hunger, Lord. Change my diet. Change my spiritual diet until I am so hungry for you that I can't function. It is a gift that can only be received from him. I can't give it to you. You can't give it to me. We can only get it from him. Are you hungry for the Lord? Are you just comfortable where you're at? I want more. Matt knows things now that I wish I could know. He's seeing things now I wish I could see. But there are things we can know and see down here. We just don't see them and we don't know them because we're not hungry. I'm hungry. Forgive me for not being hungry for a while, Lord. Hungry now, though. A lot of Christians try to coerce themselves into a hunger God, saying, I've got to have more faith. I've got to have more hunger. I've got to be more. No, the Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's not about I, me. It's about him. Come and live in me. Come and set a fire in my spirit. Come and give me a hunger like I've never had. Now, some of you, you don't know Jesus at all. You're not saved. You know who he is. But if you die today, now, wonderful thing. It was so sweet of the Lord to say he's with me now. What a beautiful thing. I knew it anyway. But I don't want to have to wonder about you guys. You ain't going to have to worry about me. If I drop over dead right now, I'm going to join Matt's band. But I want to say to you today, if you're not hungry for him today, ask him now. I'm hungry. I want more of you. This world has nothing to offer you. All the money in the world, nothing. Houses, riches, bank accounts, nothing. I don't want it. If he gives it, okay. But that's not where my heart's going to be. My heart is going to be on him. If there's anyone in this room that says, I need 
Jesus. I need a new hunger. I need you, Lord, more than yesterday. I need you, Lord, more than words can say. I need you, Lord, more than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I'm just going to ask you if that's you to stand to your feet. If you're hungry for a new season in your life, I would say to you, stand to your feet. If you're hungry for more of the Lord, more of his spirit, more of the glory, it's time to move on. No, no more playing church down here. We're going to start kicking that devil's butt every chance we get. We're going to start slamming him every chance we get. We're going to start reaching into dark places and pulling people into the light. And we're going to give God all the glory because he alone is worthy of praise. So let's just take a minute and tell him we're hungry, Lord. We're hungry. We're hungry. Hungry for more. Yahweh, touch our hearts. Fill our hearts. Remove from us everything that is in our lives that doesn't please you. Remove from us worldliness, hatred, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, spiritual pride. Remove all these things that you just can't stand. And then till we're stripped bare and our stomachs are empty. And then we say, Lord, now fill us. Fill us with fruit. You said he, that the food you are going to give us is going to be meat indeed. Fill us with that food, Lord. Give us that food that sustains. Give us that food that, that gives us real strength in, in Christ Jesus. Thank you for empty tomb. Lord, we as a congregation, we say thank you for Matt. Thank you for his service here these years. Thank you for his love and his dedication in the midst of his struggles, in the midst of his sorrows, in the midst of one thing after another. Uh, he just kept on plugging. He hated missing church, but he'll never miss church again. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. So, Lord, thank you for Empty Tomb. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters. Thank you for the body of Christ. And Lord, we pray every Sunday we, uh, we get fresh bread in this place. Not yesterday's crumbs. We want fresh bread. We want fresh revelation. I pray that you will stir up the gifts of the Spirit in this congregation that are here and that we would begin to operate in the Spirit the way you desire us to operate and that this place will just rock for your glory for your glory, that this place will become a light in a dark place and that the people in this community will, it'll be irresistible to come in here and they, they would come in hungry and they would taste and see that you are good. So we love you. We praise you in Jesus' mighty, holy name. Amen. Now we're going to have communion.